Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Jenna. If you're new here, subscribe. Check out my Instagram. It is about to be finals week. I am feeling it heavily. I am in a different filming spot right now because I just could not be bothered to sit in a real chair. And yes, I am wearing sweatpants and my new Lululemon top. If you haven't seen my Lululemon Black Friday haul video where I got this top, click the card above and check that out. It is um about to be finals week and I am a senior at Marquette University and I'm a digital media major for most of my like digital media classes it's really project based so I have a lot of editing to do but for all of my other classes I take exams just like everybody else but before I changed my major to digital media I was an exercise physiology major and so like I do have experience when it comes to studying like sciencey stuff but digital media was just like is actually what I want to do so yeah I'm really just rambling right now because I'm very very tired but I wanted to film this video as a way to procrastinate studying for finals. Pretty much I'm just gonna go over how I like to prioritize my time and study. This is the way that works for me. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. I am a straight A student generally, but I do work very, very hard for them. I've really definitely figured out like what works best for me for studying without a doubt. I prioritize my time studying for finals based on how I'm doing in the class and when the final exam is. While it might be important if I have an exam on Monday, so I definitely need to right away start studying for that exam, but depending on my grades in that class, I honestly might not put in as much time for a Monday exam as I could for like a Tuesday or a Wednesday exam, depending on my grade. Right in the beginning of the semester, I really make a point to get myself as organized as possible. I right away look at the syllabuses, syllabi for all of my different classes and I break down the grades, the assignments, and all of that into a spreadsheet on Excel. I make different tabs at the bottom so they each have their own page. And then I like to set it up so the name of the class is at the top and then it is broken down into quizzes, exams, assignments that are specific to the classes. For example, this is my media law class which I'm taking right now and we had one quiz three exams, six media law problems, a debate, and then an assignment. I put in the grades, I have a column for points, and then I have a column for percentages just so I can get a general feel for it without always having to do the math in case it's more complicated math. Right in the beginning of the school year, I obviously don't have any grades. So I like to input projected grades. I put them in the grades column and I always have them in the color red. As soon as soon as I get my grades back for every assignment, for every exam, I put in the score that I actually got. That way it's a running, accurate, up-to-date number. I like to color code everything. You'll see a lot of that happening in this video. At the very bottom then, I show my grade, what points I've earned out of how many, and then a percentage. And then I also have a breakdown of all the points and then what letter grade that equates to. Some classes do it on a 100 point scale. Other classes like this one is out of some other random number. Instead of always having to divide, I just put it in a little cheat sheet basically for how many points I need. What I do too is under points, I do equals sum, and then I select each of the different totals. That way I can hit enter and it gives me the running total. As I update it, it will update in the total. To get an A in this class, I need to hit 233 to 250 points out of 200. Right now in the class, I am around 236.5 points, which makes me well in the A range. This is also just a really great resource for prioritizing my studying because I am going to study more for other courses that I have lower grades in. It's really cool because I am so up to date on all my grades and how they all play together that I can figure out the lowest possible percentage that I can get on my final to still keep that A. For me to hit 
hit the very bottom, so 233 points, I get a 38.5 out of 45 on this upcoming final exam, which equals to 85 on this exam and still keep my A. An A minus range ends at 225 points to keep the letter grade A, but I'm open to getting an A minus in this course. I could get a 67% on this exam. So I'm really not going to worry about studying. I go to every class. I never skip class. That's a huge thing that really does help me. I feel like if you just show up to class, it's the easiest way to get a decent grade. Plus some professors do take attendance and so those are easy points to get. Something I briefly mentioned already is I do a lot of color coding. I found over the years that that helps me memorize things the best. Instead of just memorizing like information or reading something and remembering it, that's not how my brain works. I am a very like visual learner. I've just found that I remember things the best if I memorize the colors and the patterns instead of the information. So this is just what I made today for this exam. I always like to use plain printer paper because I like to be able to write really small. I have always used columns instead of using the full sheet and then I color code everything. I will include a closer up picture of this piece of paper and I just put in as much information onto a sheet of paper as I possibly can. When I go to take the test, I just like review it real quick right before the exam and then I put it away and I take the exam and one of the first things I do is if there's like a diagram or a table or something that I have to memorize, I immediately go and I draw out the diagram exactly how I just saw it. And I always put everything in the exact same order. Instead of putting on like your study sheet, uh, red, blue, green, you put blue, red, green on that and then you put red, green, blue on another like on your note card. It can become confusing. It's just giving your brain one extra step to remember, or at least that's how I always feel like. I really found that consistency helps. Just being as consistent with the material and how you present it, patterns, colors, numbers, that's how my brain likes to work. Once I figured that out, it was a really big game changer for my study patterns and habits because it gave me a clear direction as to where to start and what to do. My preferred methods of studying, some people love note cards, some people can just read stuff and remember it, can't relate. What I like to do is I use OneNote and I keep detailed notes about all of the material. So I go through all of the PowerPoints, whether I take notes in class um, I do like to take notes on my computer or on my iPad. I organize it always the same way, that way it's consistent. When I'm studying for finals, the first thing I like to do is to go back over the PowerPoints if the professor, you know, gives them to you. Uh, not all of them do, and that's really bogus, but yeah, it's true. I like to make sure that either I get down all the notes or that all of the notes that I had already taken are accurate and in the most organized fashion. Then once all of my notes are done, then I go ahead and make one of these sheets. I cannot handwrite everything and I cannot type everything. I have to do a mixture of both for my brain to really process it. So it's a lot of repetition, but that way you can remember the patterns. I found that if I just type, it can become like mindless at some points, but handwriting can be so slow at some points that like typing it out really quick helps too. And Anything I'm having problems remembering or I'm getting confused, I like to make note cards. Instead of using like actual index note cards, I take a, another sheet of paper and I just make a stack of paper note cards. It's easy. I will always have enough because I could just grab another piece of paper. And then I also color code my note cards to match with my sheets. So like this one center category is all green and I have a set of note cards which have terms, dates, events, all in green. And then I have ones in all in blue. Everything is color coded. I also really like super fine tip pens and pencils because I get to write really small and jam pack inf information into it. I don't know why, but writing really small and putting all of everything in one place instead of having a lot more sheets of paper helps me. I think part of it just has 
to do with like the visual layout of things. When it's all right there, it seems so much more like manageable. Like one sheet of all the information I need to know versus multiple sheets. Like yeah, it's the same amount of information, but looking at it like this makes it feel a lot better. And then at that point, I like to check and see if there have been Quizlets made. Not every class has a Quizlet that's been made. So like sometimes I don't find anything and that's fine. I very rarely make my own Quizlets. I just feel like paper note cards work better for me than Quizlets do. So like when you're making handwritten note cards, I feel like you have to really like simplify and register like what the information is because you don't want to write down a full paragraph of information like directly from a PowerPoint. I really do like the learn it feature and the test feature that Quizlet does have. If I could find that someone already made a Quizlet for the class, um, I like to do that. When it comes to really processing the information, I feel like writing up note cards and selecting what you think is the most important parts of a definition or of something makes it easier to remember. I work really well under pressure and so I have a lot of trouble pushing myself to study a week in advance, but if I ever do, it's amazing and I feel great and I am so calm for the exam. I do work better in the mornings than at night and so I prioritize sleep and eating. Then I wake up at 5, 6, 7 a.m., go to the library depending on whatever time I have class because I am the most productive when I am not hungry, not tired, and it's the morning. <laughs> I just do so much better in the mornings than at night. Okay, so sorry if that was kind of rambly. Thank you so much for watching. These are some of the tips and tricks that I use to study for my finals. It's just it's a lot of color coding, a lot of repetition, and a lot of planning and prepping to give yourself the best odds of not completely freaking out and procrastinating. But let's be real, it happens. It's college. Well, I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye!